another day, another perfect sunrise here in Greece. For those who are not aware, I'm on the outskirts of Athens in Attica at a place called Ablaki, Porto Rafti. And this particular location where I am today is called Joanna's. There's a house here that's got the name Joanna's. And very, very few people have been at this particular location. It's quite remote. But as you can see, it is quite beautiful and spectacular. Greece is a perfect holiday location for a number of reasons. The clear skies, the dry climate, the buoyant waters of the Aegean. So that sun there is rising over Evia and this water here, this waterway, this mass of water is called the Aegean Sea. And the water temperature is sublime. There are no sharks, there are no jellyfish, there are no currents. There's a bit of there's a bit of swell today, but it's only because of the direction of the gentle breeze. But there are other times where I come here and it's absolutely perfect with no swell whatsoever. But I'll go in for a swim. This swell here doesn't perturb me because uh, this little bay that I'm swimming in has a ladder. This ladder's been here for donkey's years. I remember when I first came to Greece back in the uh, 80s, I came here and this is my little secret bolt hole away from everything and away from everybody. So Greece has wonderful weather, a dry climate. It hardly ever rains during winter. And as I mentioned before, one of the great advantages are the clear skies. It's very rare to see a cloud in the sky. And I can see just one little cloud there on the horizon, which will burn up and disappear shortly. But uh, for those who are traveling to Athens, what I encourage you to do is to make the most of the Attica region in and around Athens, because there are lots and lots of beautiful beaches. There are beaches which are organized with chairs, toilets, showers, and there are other beaches which are unorganized. Some beaches you need to pay to get into, others are free for you just to indulge and to find your own little cove or set of rocks to dive in from and to enjoy the day. Because here in Greece, you can spend the whole day in the water. You can spend the whole day at the beach, if you wish. And sunrise today was at about 6.15. And sunset will be at about 8.45 tonight. So as you can see, you're getting 15 solid hours of beach weather, beach day, where you can make the most of every minute of that day. How wonderful, how wonderful is it to be sitting here and to be receiving the gift of God, the first rays, just like the first day in creation, watching the sun come up seemingly out of the water but it came up behind Mount Evia over there or Evia the, uh, the landmass it's not an island it's more like a peninsula with a small little um, joining point to the mainland of Greece it's a massive island which has had historically many issues and problems with wildfires many of which have been lit by the locals, allegedly. 
that the, the haze that appears in the sky above Evia is what <coughs> helps make these sunrises memorable. And the other thing that I love about Greece is that Greece is very predictable in some ways and unpredictable in others. But when it comes to climate, when it comes to weather, the predictability is its gift. Knowing that every morning when you get up, you're going to be celebrating a wonderful sunrise and every evening or late afternoon a sunset will also be part of the offering as well. You can also get to see moonrises and moonsets. So where the sun is coming up over there, in two days time, or sorry, tomorrow actually, tomorrow night at about 9.15, the red moon will be rising out of the, uh, seemingly out of the uh, Aegean Sea behind um, Evia over there and it's going to be absolutely spectacular to watch. Anyway, I'm just going to go for a swim shortly but I thought I'd just share with you my thoughts about summer in Greece, summer 24 in Greece and to encourage all of my Greek diasporadas from all over the world to come back to Greece because as I tell my children and my grandchildren of the Greek, the great Greek diaspora that every rock, every pebble, every grain of sand on this land has their name indelibly etched upon it. And every breeze, every zephyr, every wind that blows through the trees, over the waves and through the valleys and over the mountains, cries out their name and pines for them, wanting them to return home so that it can hug them with the rays of the sun, it can refresh them with the cool zephyr in the afternoon and to welcome them back home because being Greek, being of Hellenistic background is not a bloodline or is not necessarily a bloodline, it's not necessarily a DNA, but it's a way of thinking, it's a way of living, it's a way of expressing all that God wants of us, to be free, to indulge in his creation, and to celebrate him, to serve him, and to serve our neighbours, our enemies, our others. Everybody we come into contact with, we are called upon to serve and to live God's wish and to do all the things that are God-pleasing. The temperature already is well into, into the 30s, but the beauty of Greece is it's a dry heat. It's not a humid heat like you'd find in Australia or some other tropical place. Here the heat is dry and it's bearable. And as I said before, it's just perfect for being in the water and swimming and making the most of the beach life, the beach lifestyle that the Greeks and the, the, the Athenians get to enjoy. The other thing that I say and I've noticed over the years is that Athens provides many, many things and caters to many tastes. And if, if you, as a person, can't find fulfillment in Athens and its surrounding suburbs, 
if you can't find yourself in Athens, if you can't be satisfied in and around Athens, then chances are nowhere in Greece will fill you because Athens is Greece. It always has been, it always will be. And Athens has always been a place that every king, every queen, every emperor, every empress, every dictator, every single person in the world has wanted to conquer and to make her the main jewel in their crown. But to our credit, the mighty Greeks have been able to be on the right side of justice, the right, right side of freedom and democracy, and have always fought for those things that are very, very important. From back in the days of the Persian Wars, to the Second World War, the First World War, where the Greeks fought gallantly to keep Greece free from tyranny, from the despots, and all of those who had their own interests and not the interests of freedom at, uh, as their priority. So you don't need to chase Santorini sunsets, you don't need to chase the fakery of Mykonos, you don't need to go anywhere else. You can spend all of your time in and around Athens and find everything because these, this part of Greece can offer a island lifestyle for those who search the island lifestyle it provides sunsets sunrises and lots and lots of entertainment for people to indulge in and to enjoy at a fraction of the cost of being on an island without being confined to an island without being confined to a ferry prison to be able to move freely wherever you want to go using public transport, using your own car and being close to the locals rather than being one of the mass of uh, tourists, the amorphous mass of hustle and bustle, the amorphous mass of people who feel entitled to come here, stay a while, um, take without giving. So keep it in mind that when you travel to Greece, make the most of it, but be respectful of this country's beautiful nature. It's philotimo nature and the gifts that it has given the world. My late uncle George Gikas would always say that the Greeks have given the world more than what the world could ever hope to repay. And it's important to keep that in mind and to understand it and to appreciate it. That Greece doesn't hold on to things it enjoys sharing its gifts and what it has because this is a land that has always, always been deeply religious, has always celebrated the, the gifts of God, even though they may have lost their way for a short time with polytheism and... Um, and idolatry but to remember 
that the Greek language, the Greek way of thinking, was that that was used to be able to translate and to pass on the Word of God in the New Testament because the Gospels and the epistles of St. Paul, the Acts, were all written in the Greek language. So whenever you hear the New Testament, whenever you hear chanting, it's important to understand and to appreciate that what you're hearing is how it was originally conceived and captured and used to spread the word of God throughout the Greek speaking world. And to know that St. Paul spent at least three years in and around Greece, spent time in Corinth where he was a tent maker and, and preached the word of God. He also spent time in Athens where he went to Mars Hill and preached to the Athenians, preached to the Athenian Senate up there on Mars Hill where the Senate would congregate to make laws and pass punishments. And it's in Athens up there at Mars Hill that he had his first converts. The uh, Bishop Dionysos was one of the first bishops of Athens and was a uh, convert from the mouth and the words of St. Paul. Anyway, thank you very much for taking the time. What I'll do now is I'll take a dip and to enjoy what I have here in front of me. So wishing you all a very good day and stay well, stay safe and until next next until next time, yasas and bye Jim on Jim's 5am club.